Hello there people and welcome to episode 12 of Fallout 4 modding. The new mod releases this time were a bit more colorful, you know, less fashion show and more quality mods. One of them is really huge and definitely not easy to digest. Think you can handle this kind of stuff? Or is it too much for you to stomach? Let's find out after the intro. The ability to speak is something the player character received in Fallout 4 for the first time. No matter if you like this change or not, there is no way around it. The only problem is, there is only one voice. Or at least was until now. Player voice frequency slider by C. Dante. If you start a new game and want to play as a different guy or girl, and also of course sound different, or if you are just tired of your character's voice, you can change it in a matter of seconds through a Pip-Boy menu or simply the MTM menu. There are also some presets available if you want to make things even easier. Vault Tech, remind me again. Simple and effective. It's really mind-breaking how Bethesda didn't think about this, considering literally every second game with character customization out there has of this. The only drawback this mod currently has is that slow motion events such as wets or jets reset the voice changes. But from what I've read, this issue is already being worked on and will be fixed soon. In other words, we are well prepared for the apocalypse. Now I can't wait for the world to end. Okay, think fast. What do we need most to survive the post-apocalyptic wasteland? Food. Better immersive survival. Food module by Reptile Eye. This mod adds tons of new food items to the game, but it does not just add them, it adds them immersively. I'm not joking, this mod brings a lot of changes to the food system. Basically, all the vanilla food is now much more harmful and highly irradiated. It only makes sense. Food items which have survived a nuclear apocalypse and have been exposed to radiation for hundreds of years should be more harmful. Same goes for crops which grow in irradiated soil, obviously, and of course there's the irradiated water. The chances to get diseases from food have also been increased. Sometimes you can even take direct damage from food or get light stats debuffed, like from vanilla alcoholic beverages. Cooking is also not a walk in the park anymore. To prepare meats, for example, you will also need the new salt ingredient. Boiling water to remove radiation? This is not how it works, dear Bethesda. Now you will need water purifier powder to do this. That's the only way. So yes, yeah, sounds really hardcore, doesn't it? But to make it balanced, all those new food items have been added. Items like home cooked meals or packed food items, like military or vault creations. This stuff is of course harder to obtain and more expensive, but in return not as harmful as vanilla foods and less risky. You will find it on certain vendors or new co-looking vending machines, which have been placed in a really immersive way. For example, vault food in vaults, obviously. The institute will have their own high-end and synthetic-looking food, the Brotherhood of Steel military-looking rations, and so on. There are even those candy dispensers, which also hold trading card packs. Yeah, with this you can not only obtain sweet stuff, but become a card collector. Looks like I had a really nice draw there. There are just so many new items. Really impressive how much thought has been put into all this. Bethesda should really consider hiring this modder for the next game. The only thing I worry about here is copyright. All those brands, you know. So yeah, if you want this mod, you should probably grab it fast. You know how things can go on the Nexus sometimes. Alright, now that we are well fed, it's time to get some new toys. Flare, laser assisted electrical rifle by the Ritzler, Wanna Mingo, Haru, Pai Sevi, Vicious, and friends. A new energy weapon similar to the Tesla rifle from the Automatron DLC. This weapon can be modified to give off single shots or automatic fire. If you use it together with knockout framework, there is also the possibility to turn it into a non-lethal stun weapon. There are also some special upgrades to make it more effective against robots, pins and power armor users. And of course many other customization possibilities, like scopes, barrels, stokes, a really cool electrical stun bayonet and also lots of skins, which can be unlocked by finding those new custom magazines. There is even an equipable accessory to wear on the back, which can be crafted at the camp station. 
And that's not all, there's also a new energy turret for the settlements which uses this model. You can also have this as a new weapon to equip on robots from the Automatron DLC and also some scope overlays to use together with a scope framework. In other words, a really complete weapon mod. The next weapon mod is smaller and more straightforward. Lock 20 weapon replacement and standalone by Zgeber Terramon. So here we have a simple, classic looking 10mm pistol with custom sounds and animations. You can have it as a replacer for the 10mm handgun or as a standalone weapon. In terms of customization there is not that much, at least not much visual variety. It does however have all the vanilla-like customization options. Armor time! Unfortunately this time not a pure fashion show, but actually some believable and quality armors too. Cross Institute Expeditionary Suit by Nairo. Yes, starting with a bang. A new mod by Nairo is always like an early Christmas. So here we have another badass Institute themed suit. Similar to the Cursor Strigidae one, also with a cool visor helmet and of course with lots of customization options as usual. A total of 14 different skins in 2K or 4K, depending on which extra file you download. Then the customization on separate parts. This time we even get some real-time customization options by simply equipping the suit. You can modify the suit to be unzipped for example, or add new parts, like those Kellogg Armor Cybernetics and lots of other stuff of course. The faction patches can be swapped too. You can also change the color or the glass on the mask, different lights too of course. There is a custom customizable light on the mask and damn. For this suit it's really strong. It illuminates a huge area and will certainly make you stand out like a star on top of a Christmas tree. Alright, this one is a rather badass suit for the Institute Combat Geeks, but the next one is for real soldier boys. Galactic by Ghost. Fox? Ugh, I need a break. So anyway, what is this even? Looks like a combat armor with a Boba Fett helmet. The description says it's based on a real-life airsoft helmet. Holy shit, I had no idea Boba Fett was real. And that he is into airsoft? Well, mind blown. Learn something new every day. Oh shit, and the next one is a complete death sentence. Absolutely skimpy attire by Dicker. Well, at least this one does not beat around the bush, you know. This mod has a total of 65 separately equipable clothing items for CVBE. The models and themes seem very familiar from other mods, only that this stuff seems to have suffered from a bad case of laundry shrinking. Yeah, that and maybe a few additional hits from Selinski's shrinking ray. In case you feel a little feverish from all this, we also have Terra Nurse Uniform by Derbsdale. It's actually less skimpy as you would expect from a Terra outfit, actually quite nice if you want to build a hospital for your settlements for example, and yes, so there are some different color options. The next outfit mod is Eureka Summer Dress by Sun Jong. Yep, summer is coming, and this looks like a perfect light and comfortable dress for hot summer days. So what's up with the heels? As far as I know, there is no HDT high heel system mod for Fallout 4 yet, or am I just too retarded to find it? Yeah, okay, let's agree that I'm retarded. And the last outfit is Lara's wetsuit by Caliente and Oznius. It's the wetsuit from Tomb Raider Underworld. Yeah, remember when Tomb Raider was more like Tomb Raider and less like an Uncharted clone? Also, that's totally fitting. Lara and Laura. Yeah, this kinda ended up as a little fashion show after all. Well, whatever, let's throw in some accessories as well. Wearable dog tags by Blood Free. Guess what? Those are dog tags! This stuff you can collect in the game like an idiot without being able to actually equip them. And with this mod you can. Fascinating. As long as you are okay with being Sarah T. Grey. It's supposed to be from the Wolverine movie. But nobody will care who you are until you put on the mask. Attila the Band by Derbsdale. This mod was supposed to be a literal easter egg, but yeah, I mean, why not? 
We could all just put on those cute, huge bunny heads, stop fighting, make peace and become one big happy family. Like the happy tree friends. Or go on a bloody rampage killing everything in sight. That sounds good too. And this is how it ends. This is how it always ends. But not today. Today, instead of going on a meaningless bloody rampage, we shall go on a meaningful bloody rampage with a new quest mod. East Side Story, an ACB quest by SuperNet97. This mod is supposed to be the second in the ACB series, which is dedicated to L. Chess Breach, a famous Fallout mod reviewer. Never heard of them? The only famous mod reviewer I know is Ikari. Somebody should make a mod about him. Damn pricks. But jokes aside. To start, we have to go to the decrepit military station north of the Glowing Sea. This is a small dungeon with some enemies, and at the end we find this weird guy. Oh, hi there. I hope the monsters didn't give you too much trouble. So, do you have my package? The NPCs of this mod are fully voiced with quality actors. The player character is silent, but that's rather normal. So anyway, this guy seems to be another escaped institute scientist with a little bit of a loose screw. A tiny package with a fluffy deathclaw plushie inside with a mini top hat? No? Don't, don't, don't judge, it's a premium collector's edition toy. Totally not weird. Uh, did I say a little bit? I meant completely. But long story short, he wants us to participate in a little experiment of his. I'll make my own simulations with blackjack and hookers. Good enough? Now that sounds familiar. Also, for the people who asked me whether I would make Fallout VR reviews, here is some fucking VR, you're welcome. So anyway, once inside the simulation, we end up in a small new world space. It's quite simple, but actually looks quite okay. And it's full of weirdos too. Fire crap! Also, I'm not sure where the promised hookers are supposed to be. To me, it looks more like we get a bunch of hobos instead. What a ripoff, right? Also, that this guy. The cat calls the pastry shop for some blueberry pie. What does the owner say back? Well, what can I say? I mean, I don't want to spoil too much because this mod is not that long, but by now you probably already get the idea. It's full of jokes, easter eggs and fourth wall breaks. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to... Yeah, that thing on your screen. And it's gone. Yeah, I don't know what it said, but do that. Bye. So yeah, it's without a question a fun mod. Nothing serious, of course. Just a short little giggle adventure and a prime example of Fallout modding craziness, a world where everything is possible. And this is all for this episode. Links to all mods are as always in the description below. Don't forget to enjoy the mods you like. And if you think this review was cool, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more. If you want to see more videos, help me out by sharing my content on other sites or support me on Patreon. I thank you all for watching and see you around.